When we faced the first surge, when COVID-19 exploded into our everyday lives, did we think we'd find ourselves here? One year and one month into the pandemic. Vaccines. Available to all adults 16 years and older. But before we celebrate shots in arms, one year and one month in, we find ourselves in the midst of yet another COVID-19 surge, leading the nation in all the wrong ways. Hospitals at capacity, medical professionals warning, asking for help. Our public health system is overwhelmed. This time, the sick are not our seniors. It's our younger generation. Tonight, your biggest questions answered. The latest on the supply and the demand for the vaccines. Who really wants the shot? And who is still on the fence? Can we really vaccinate our way out of this? The race between the virus and the vaccines as the coronavirus crisis continues. And good evening. We're awfully glad you're with us tonight. When we started producing this program, we thought the focus was going to be solely on the vaccines and answering your questions and helping you make a decision on whether and how to get one. But unfortunately, cases of COVID-19 are surging across the state, right, Doc? Yeah, first responders are stressed and overworked once again, and there is now a pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Yeah, so let's start tonight, though, by getting you up to speed on the day's events. There have been plenty of those as things continue to rapidly change here in Michigan. Governor Whitmer is for now staying the course, saying there is no plan at the moment to issue new restrictions. Instead, she spent today pushing the use of therapeutic treatments for those who have COVID. The state's top medical executive, though, Dr. Janae Caldoun, said she is incredibly concerned about the state's COVID data with case rates now five times higher than they were in February. Detroit Mayor Duggan says he's worried about the extremely low vaccination rate in his city. In fact, he's going to join us live in just a moment. Michigan continues to lead the country in new cases. Today, the state added nearly 8,000 new cases and 35 more deaths. Now, the governor's repeatedly said vaccines are the greatest tool in this fight. As of today, 5.4 million Michiganders have received at least one dose, and that is nearly 42% of the state's population. And tonight, the Johnson & Johnson single-shot vaccine remains paused after a CDC advisory committee asked for more time and data on a potential side effect. Now, this one vaccine has not yet been a large part of the vaccine effort to date, but still an important element to getting us out of the pandemic, Doc. Absolutely. Now, the concern centers around six cases of a rare type of blood clot. It's called a cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. Basically, that is a clot in the major vessel that drains the blood from our brain. Now, this type of clot is usually by itself unusual, but with regard to the vaccine, there is an added concern that it's being accompanied by a low platelet count, making it an even rarer situation. Now, the pause of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine really highlights the importance of safety and the thorough monitoring that's being done. In fact, today, during a four-hour emergency meeting, the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices decided they actually wanted more information to help determine the risk and whether it's greater for certain groups. And they do plan to meet again soon to reevaluate the situation. Now, there is something I really want to emphasize here, though. The concern over blood clots is specific to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, as well as the AstraZeneca vaccine that is not yet authorized in the U.S. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which have comprised over 95% of the vaccine that's used in the U.S., use a completely different technology, and there have not been any unusual safety signals that have been raised with them. Now, bigger picture, while the Johnson & Johnson issue is being sorted out, here in Michigan, we are still facing dramatically increasing COVID numbers. By every metric we've used, new cases, percent positivity, rate of hospitalizations, everything is increasing at a very concerning rate. Honestly, in the emergency room this past weekend, I put more people on ventilators for COVID than I have in a really long time. And the overall situation in hospitals is worsening. Frankly, without action on the part of the governor or the health department, it is up to everyone to slow the spread. Now, vaccines are going into arms as fast as they can. But even if I could just snap my finger and vaccinate everyone tomorrow, it would still actually be four to six weeks before the effect would be enough for the vaccines to meaningfully flatten that curve. So we all need to slow this surge. Even if you think you or your family isn't going to get COVID, 
You need to help do it because you might need the emergency room. And frankly, stopping COVID will improve our ability to care for everyone, whether you have COVID or not. Yeah. All right, Doc. Well, the state's goal is to vaccinate 100,000 people every day. While vaccines are more widely available, can anyone who wants a shot easily get a shot? Local 4 Defender Sean Lay continues to monitor the supply and demand across southeast Michigan. He's live right now at Ford Field where Pfizer vaccines are currently being given. Sean? Absolutely, and things just wrapped up here from Ford Field. Good evening to you. We have been tracking the vaccine for you from the very start, and we're finding people are really making it their mission to find vaccine for others every day. It's a race to vaccinate. I just wanted to be safe. That's pretty much it. As COVID-19 continues to spread. Help the cause and get back to kind of normal life. Who has the vaccine? Meyer making a big impact, administering a half million doses. 120,000 doses are scheduled for next week. 35,000 for the Ford Field FEMA Clinic. The city of Detroit administering 90% of its 308,000 vaccine doses, but once more demand. Now bringing vaccine to neighborhoods like this clinic in southwest Detroit. And then the battle on where there is vaccine and how to make an appointment. Meet Whitney, Elizabeth, and Katie. Detroit area vaccine hunters. That's this Facebook page where Katie, Elizabeth, and Whitney, along with 200 volunteers, work day and night to find vaccine and make appointments for people. You create it and people come. Just give me a ballpark. How many people you've helped get a shot? Uh, over 3,000. They are experts at vaccine supply. Now, what's supply like? What are you seeing out there now? There are a ton of vaccines um, in southeast Michigan and across the state right yes. now. Liz, what are you seeing demand-wise? What's it like now? I'm seeing a lot of people getting shots, and it's so beautiful. Please help us find those that are still vulnerable. We can make appointments for them quickly. Vaccines still can be scarce in some areas, Dearborn Fire. Vaccinating 1,500 people a day, supply just staying ahead of demand. Washtenaw County remains flooded with requests. They're using mass clinics and home visits to get shots out as they get shots in. The Macomb Health Department is getting 30,000 doses out a week at seven sites. The vaccine hunters say there are still vulnerable people out there that do not know how to make an appointment. There are younger people out there that don't know that they are now eligible and there are those who do not want it. I think like now as we run into the younger groups it's working around work schedules and stuff like that so I think it's just important to remember that this should be a priority and we really need to get everyone vaccinated in order for life to return to normal. Huge demand but also yes. huge supply I would say. And back here live at Ford Field, there is news tonight. We just checked with officials here and the clinic here at Ford Field, it is moving into the second dose phase. That's where we are. Also, no decision yet on what to do for the last two weeks of the clinic uh, when Johnson & Johnson was the plan. Back to you. Okay, Sean, thank you. Well, in Detroit, the mayor is incredibly worried about the rise of COVID-19 cases in the city and its extremely low vaccination rate. Detroit's vaccine rate right now, 24% lowest in the state among the municipalities. And Mayor Duggan, good enough to join us tonight from the Manoogian. Uh, mayor, I want to start with the vaccine picture in Detroit. Universally strong reviews for the operation you've been running at TCF Center. I speak from experience. A really well-oiled machine. Other locations now have it, and yet not enough Detroiters rolling up their sleeves and availing themselves of it. Well, 128,000 Detroiters have gotten the vaccine in less than three months, which in any other time would be extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, but we know we have to do more and uh, the supply is available. You can get an appointment uh, by making a phone call. And at this point, uh, the biggest thing we need to do is push out information. We have the access. Uh, and now we need to make sure people have the information they need to make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mayor, the pause that's been put on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, does that end up having an impact on those who've been a little hesitant to get the vaccine and maybe make it even tougher to get them on board with it? Uh, there has been a little of that today. Of course, in the city of Detroit, 98% of the vaccines we've given have been Moderna and Pfizer, mm -hmm. and so we haven't been really... Uh, much relying on it, but I've had a lot of questions today, uh, and I think the the fact that your doctor just made the point 
uh, that there's been no problems at all with the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. And you can get the Moderna Pfizer vaccines in the city of Detroit now in 24 different locations. So we're starting to push it out into every corner of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor, a lot of people have been surprised that the governor and the health department haven't gone back to the ordered restrictions that were put in place back when the infection and hospital rates were even lower than they are right now. Would you urge more stringent measures, as I should note, the CDC has been urging for the state of Michigan? Well, I know the governor is taking a very close look at that. And the question is, where is the spread occurring? And uh, if you go into the restaurants, at least in this city, uh, the workers are masked, the, the seats are being cleaned, they're being spaced out. There's no evidence that the spread is occurring in things like open restaurants. On the other hand, there are a lot of gatherings in backyards and in houses with large number of people and no masks. And the governor's question is, will the order uh, have any effect on that? So she'll find uh, the right balance. The thing that I would say is, uh, a year ago, we only had one means of fighting this, which is masking up and social distancing, which we need to do. And now we have two ways of fighting it. Uh, and, and even with the rise, we are at significantly lower rates than we were a year ago. Sure. Well, Mayor, among younger people who aren't getting vaccinated, is that a matter of not trusting the vaccine, you think? Or is it a matter of thinking they're young, they're healthy, and they just don't need one? Yeah. You know, I've been on a number of Zoom calls the last couple of days uh, with teenagers and folks in their early 20s, uh, and I just don't think it's top of mind for them the way it is uh, for somebody in their 60s and 70s. And by the end of the call, uh, people are, are signing up. Uh, and Denise Fair, our health director tonight, did two teleconference calls with 9,000 people on there tonight. So I think the interest level is getting more intense, uh, but there's no doubt it takes more to persuade a 20-year-old invincible uh, to get the vaccine, but it's something we've got to figure out how to do. Yeah, well, now you've got town halls planned. You, you, you even talked about going door to door if you have to. Uh, good luck as you continue to try to get the message out. And uh, Mr. Mayor, thanks so much for the time tonight. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thanks for doing the show. Sure. You bet. Well, he is the leading voice on the pandemic, advising Pre uh, President Biden on COVID-19. So what does Dr. Anthony Fauci think is behind this latest surge in cases in our state, Doc? Well, I had a chance to speak to him in depth about Michigan and his opinion on what you can do once you're fully vaccinated. I'm joined today by someone who needs absolutely no introduction, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the chief medical advisor to President Biden. Dr. Fauci, thank you so much for making the time to inform our viewers today. Thank you for having me. So I'd like to start with a question specific to our state. Michigan, as you know, is experiencing, a, is experiencing a significant new wave in cases despite having a mask mandate in place and capacity limits in place. Meanwhile, there are other parts of the country, many that have far fewer restrictions. They are not experiencing the same degree of increase. Can I ask you your thoughts on why Michigan seems to be doing so much worse right now compared to other states? You know, we don't have a precise answer to that question. It's very likely a couple of things together. We're having a dominant um, a variant now that's circulating, the 117, which originated in the UK, that has a greater capability of transmitting from person to person. We know that. So I'm certain that this is having an impact in Michigan. Also, even though you still have a mass mandate on and you have not pulled back on some of the restrictions, that you know th there is a feeling, understandably, throughout the country, and I'm sure in Michigan, of what we call COVID-19 fatigue, where, where people just are so worn out from now close to 15 months of this really strain on us all that they are not abiding by the recommendations. And, and you, you don't want to blame people for that because you can understand completely how they feel. But I think it's a combination of not adhering to the public health measures together with this variant now that has a greater capability of efficiently transmitting from person to person. Sure. So, you know, one of the things that many viewers have focused on, and I usually answer their questions on air, is what they can change about their daily lives once they're fully vaccinated. So I'm curious, what, if anything, you might have changed about your daily life since you became vaccinated? Well, one of the things, you know, the, the CDC is coming out progressively with various installments of things you can do. Uh, with regard to personal interactions in the home, on the outside. And you're going to be hearing, literally, as the weeks and months go by, recommendations of what vaccinated people can do regarding the workplace, 
regarding places of worship and regarding travel. Like right now, what they say we can do, and I'm doing that, is that if you are in a home setting with vaccinated people, or even with people who are not unvaccinated, who are unvaccinated, that as long as they are not in a category of having a higher risk of having a severe event, namely having an underlying condition, you can interact without masks, you can have physical context. You know, the thing people ask is a grandmother who's vaccinated, can she visit her daughter and her granddaughter? And the answer is now, yes, because if you are vaccinated, as long as your daughter and granddaughter don't have an underlying condition, that might put them at a higher risk of a severe event. You can visit them in the home setting. You can take your mask off. You can give them a big hug and a kiss. All the things that we weren't sure of. But as as I mentioned, as the weeks and months go by and more and more people get vaccinated, you're going to see a less a loosening of some of those restrictions. So you need to stay tuned for the announcements from the CDC because they will be forthcoming. Sure. Okay. That's terrific. And I, I imagine you're seeing your family now, right? Well, you know, my, my three daughters are scattered throughout the country. They have been vaccinated. Uh, they're in uh, situations, professions which get vaccinated. So even though they're young in their late twenties and early thirties, they're vaccinated. So I just, am, you know, looking forward to getting them to come and visit us because we haven't really physically seen two or three of them literally in a year, which is terrible. Yeah. Well, it's hard on all families. And, you know, as a segue, I guess you talked about pandemic fatigue earlier. It's a real thing. And right now, what I think we're noticing is that the governmental resolve to impose restrictions on activities and enforce mask use is frankly decreasing in many states. And not all Americans, as we know, are on board with voluntary public health measures. So what are your thoughts on America's ability to really kind of vaccinate our way out of another wave of the pandemic at this point? You know, I think we're going to be able to do that. Every day we vaccinate about 3 million people. So every day we get closer and closer to having a broader umbrella of protection. So you kind of think of it metaphorically as a race between a surging virus and our ability to vaccinate as many people as quickly as we possibly can, and which is one of the reasons why we're really putting on, you know, a full court press to get people to get vaccinated. Just yesterday, they announced this community core which is an an organization now of multiple, multiple public and private organizations that get what's called trusted messengers to get information, to get people to understand why it's so important. And trusted messengers are anyone from church leaders to celebrities to sports figures, people that are trusted by the community to get them out there to get people vaccinated because it indeed it is a, a, a race between the vaccine and the surging virus. At what point do you think we're gonna pull ahead? I mean, we maybe we haven't made one of the turns just yet. Yeah, you know, I think it's coming soon because you know, as we're now into April, we're gonna get a lot more vaccine that's gonna be available for distribution. Every day that goes by, we get closer and closer to that goal of getting as many people as we possibly can vaccinated. Now, my conversation with Dr. Fauci continues a little later. We talk about the future of mRNA technology to help with other diseases and the lessons learned during this pandemic. Back to you. A lot more to come. The clinical trials are underway right now for the COVID-19 vaccines in children. And tonight, a talk, top expert in childhood vaccines weighs in on the importance of vaccinating our kids. And checking back in with first responders, see what uh, having vaccines means for doctors and nurses treating patients. What about misinformation about the vaccines? We'll have a look at how that's playing a big role in some people's decisions on whether or not to get one. We know how bad the coronavirus is and the vaccine is our best way to protect ourselves and stay safe and also get us closer to getting back to normal and being with our friends and our loved ones. So for me, the vaccine was get COVID or get the vaccine and it was an easy choice.